Well, good morning. My name is Tim Campos. I'm the Director of Recruitment Programs here at Art Center College of Design. Today we are streaming live from our South Campus here in Pasadena. And with me today is our special guest, Aaron Smith, who's our Associate Chair of Illustration and Alumnus as well. And uh, what we're at today is our scholarship uh, review, or in this presentation of it, an exhibition of uh, uh, illustration work from current students. And Aaron will talk to you a little bit more about that. Um, so yeah, thanks for being with us, Aaron. You're welcome. Hopefully you can give us a little bit more background just to what illustration is here at Art Center and what students could look forward to. Well, uh, illustration is a, uh, the largest department at Art Center. Um, it's, I think it's large because it encompasses a lot of different um, vocations. Um, we've got several tracks. Um, the pr predominant track is, the, is uh, illustration design and it's sort of what illustration, what we think of as illustration uh, traditionally, book covers, magazine work, um, poster, poster Definitely art. Definitely editorial. Yeah. And then it goes um, um, entertainment arts, uh, working for the entertainment industry, and uh, motion, fine art painting, uh, design matters. Yeah. So we have different areas that people concentrate on, but they decide that as they go through the program. So we can, uh, but so the, the scholarship competition happens. Um, every term and students can uh, uh, submit their work and it gets judged. These are the uh, stuff we're going to see today. It's mostly the stuff that was on the walls and this room was filled with, uh, with things that were um, uh, books that were uh, submitted by students as well uh, and they were, uh, they, they, they've taken them uh, but we're going to look at the remaining stuff and I'll show you a couple books as well. Great, so what we'll do is we'll take a look at the work here today. Aaron will point out some of the work as it regards to some of our uh, specific tracks here. And then also if you have questions, feel free to ask away and towards the, uh, the last few minutes of our stream today, we'll go ahead and take your questions that you may have, whether it's about illustration, any of the tracks, uh, how to apply to Art Center if you're interested in applying, anything at all, we'll be sure to take your questions towards the end. So how about we start on this wall, we'll just kind of wrap through. So this is an example of an, uh, of a uh, entertainment uh, book. I think an earlier term, Colin is working digitally predominantly, and um, but also working in 3D. Um, I believe this is uh, cast and maybe 3D modeled, and then he's got uh, sequential art um, as well. And so he's there's some self-publishing as well as um, examples from classwork. So every student does this. What they do is they explain um, what what it's from, um, and it's just so it's supposed to be an example uh, overview of uh, what they've been doing so far in the program. So um, Dana, um, you could tell that sometimes they they'll theme their work to the uh, their presentation to the work. Um, Dana's more of an editorial artist, so you can see poster design. Um, here and here, um, some editorial work, a lot of sketchbook work. Um, most of this work looks like it's been done with, with gouache. Um, here's a book cover, so it shows some of the application uh, with, with uh, typography, um, some three-dimensional um, work as well. One of the things that we really want to do is to help the students develop a uh, personal voice. Um, so some of these projects are meant to, to for um, ideation, help them uh, learn uh, sort of visual language, uh, but you can tell the sort of a stylization that starts to happen um, that's really based on the individual artist's uh, interests. So, Sarah Chan, Sarah Chan, this is uh, really personal work. She really is somebody who's interested in, in probably in uh, fine art painting as well as editorial work. Um, so there's a certain sense of humor with uh, three-dimensional work, um, some printmaking, uh, some paintings, so working in mixed media. So work will go from being really realistic to uh, stylized. Um, the, you know, Brittany's work is much more um, stylized. Her work really can go between, uh, there's a little bit of an entertainment feel. Um, she could be working in animation. She's also interested in children's books. So this is, uh, was produced in the children's book uh, class. And she's designed the book, 
written the book and, and printed it and produced it. Um, so a lot of these books are pitched to, um, to publishers and uh, we've had a lot of success with students uh, getting their work published. Uh, it's a great way to promote uh, yourself as well as uh, build that career. Um, the, this was done in a class where it really is about ideation and, and typography. Um, and this, is, this was made print, this is a traditional print, uh, woodblock print, but it's interesting to see this sort of um, uh, stylized sensibility that could easily come from animation be translated into traditional uh, printmaking. And then of course there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, new interest in merchandising um, and uh, creating products. Um, surface design, uh, surface and style is another track that we have uh, where students learn to apply work to, um, to fabrics, wall coverings, uh, housewares, things like that. Most illustrators are working across a lot of different um, disciplines and in different markets simultaneously. So if somebody like Brittany has a sensibility, it can really range from product design, children's books, editorial illustration, animation, and fine art. She's really somebody who's done, and, and this sensibility is, uh, is really translatable to all those different areas. So let's go to the other side. So be a super personal, super quirky work. Um, it was really great when she submitted her uh, portfolio, uh, her display yesterday. She had uh, cookies with with illustration uh, images um, hand done on them for us to to eat. But she's got this this really oddball sensibility. She actually did really well. Um, this is a uh, uh, great piece with um, traditional drawing and, and painting. So, so you can see it can go from a really commercial sensibility to a very personal sensibility. Um, this was produced in my uh, class that, that, that I co-teach called Wet Paint, uh, where it's, it's a combination of uh, fine art and illustration, and we have um, big critiques um, of that work. She's also working in uh, ceramics. We have two ceramics classes going, one through um, um, integrated studies and went through uh, uh, fine art and a lot of our illustration students like to translate basically translating this visual imagery into three dimension so she works in a variety of media paper uh, print, painting on canvas and ceramics Kaylee's an, I think she's an earlier term uh, person as well. She's working in three dimension. She's working in, in paint media as well. Kayleen has a great uh, sensibility, again, that translates. This sort of loopy figure uh, done in printmaking, um, it really translates well into these figures that she's made. Um, so there's a merchandising, there's a few product classes and merchandising classes where people make uh, prototype products and you could totally see these uh, uh, may reproduce. A lot of people that do um, uh, children's book design um, often understand that there's a merchandising aspect to those um, things. Even in entertainment, uh, you know, most of our entertainment artists are working or wanting to work for a lot of the big um, uh, production companies, DreamWorks, Pixar, Disney, uh, Cartoon Network, um, mostly for animation, but there are a lot of people who get jobs in the merchandising aspects. Disney makes more money from merchandise than it does from film, and also the video game industry is larger than the film industry. So these areas are, have diversified over the years, and I think a lot of artists really expect to work um, between all those different disciplines. But again, Kayleen really is showing a sensibility that can, that can be translated into a, kind of a pop, um, urban, uh, fine art um, orientation. Printmaking is, again, and then, and then of course, in uh, editorial and uh, merchandise. Nice, clean presentation. Elise 
Um, very personal um, sensibility, super colorful. Again, using, there's some classes where they're using three-dimensional media, um, working in the wood shops, uh, uh, in, in fabrication studios, so they really learn how to translate from the, from the two-dimensional to the three-dimensional. Joshua, this is, um, he was in that crowd that walked by uh, just now when we started. Joshua's really uh, oriented towards fine art right now, and he's, these are gouache paintings um, that he did for our class uh, recently, and they're done on paper, and there's a larger series, and then, then he's translated it with more representation in these drawings, um, paintings, and then he's also really diving into the ceramics as well. It's nice to see his sensibility translating to all these different areas. Um, this was for a drawing class um, where he had to work uh, on a, uh, in a continual way, so he, um, in a, um, a sketchbook uh, process, but he really wanted to make it both a sketchbook that's folded and, and time-based, but also can be presented uh, in a single shot. This work, I think, is really great. It's very sort of underground comic space. Um, again, they look, the, there's a strong emphasis at first in really traditional drawing and painting skills, but then you can see this sort of idiosyncratic line, use of a variety of media is, is really important. So there's a kind of an urban edge to this stuff. Um, it's nice to see her opening up with uh, three dimension. Go, let's go immediately here. So Matthew is really, he took the time for the presentation to show a variety of work. A lot of this work I think is going to be most suited for editorial. So here's a piece about global warming, right? We've got, so he'll take uh, strong concepts and uh, develop them, submit uh, um, comps and then make finishes. Um, a lot of this work is actually digital, and it, but it look, has a real handmade quality because he's using, uh, building a lot of the images in, in uh, traditional media and then using digital um, skills to kind of, uh, to make them work and present and, ch and change them around and, and changing colors as well. Uh, but this work I think is really strong, um, particularly in its application to uh, editorial, like I said. We have um, Brian uh, um, Ray is a, um, one of our faculty, and he used to be the um, art director for the uh, New York Times editorial. So, and he and Paul Rogers uh, do a class where they specifically talk about editorial um, illustration, and it's great to have an illustrator and an art director um, in in co-teaching, so that the experience can really be simulated of working. Uh, in that area. So um, while you look at Vanessa's, I'm going to run and grab a couple of books. And so as Aaron's grabbing more work for us to take a look at, um, I encourage you if you have any questions about illustration at Art Center. He's mentioned a variety of our different tracks, the fine art painting track, the design track, entertainment arts. So there's a lot of things to, to know out there. So I encourage you to connect with us also in admissions so that if you are thinking about illustration and you want to figure out what are your next steps, you can always circle back with us in admissions and we can let you know what are some of those necessary steps you might want to take to build a portfolio for illustration. And then later on we can talk about what track specifically you want to follow and um, I'll have Aaron also tell you a little bit about how you would do so once you're actually here in our program to kind of decide which track is, is appropriate for you. So I wanted to show a few of the um, book form uh, portfolios. This is Jay Kim. She, this is a fourth term book, which she's only halfway through. Um, I pulled it to show you because I think she, she got one of the highest scores. Um, she's hand bound it, which I think is a great move. Um, and she's even designed the end papers. But the presentation is amazing, but I think the work um, is really strong. So uh, this is, um, some of it's analog, it's mostly digital. Um, she'll obviously start with um, line drawing and then add color 
digitally, but she's working through a lot of um, themes, great sense of light. So she's got a great combination of a strong drawing sensibility, um, really great co uh, concept and composition, and even a great color sense. But you can see how strong her drawing is. Um, it's pretty innovative and contemporary. She's got some, some scale, she's able to tell a story. But like I said, this is one of the strongest portfolios that we saw yesterday. And she's really good for um, a midterm person. And this work, I, it's predominantly geared towards entertainment, but like you could obviously see because of its design, it could really be used editorially as well because they're really complete pictures. So some of these are going to be, um, they would be key art or um, character design. But you can see with her skill and her design skill, she this could really be a poster or a um, completed piece. Great presentation. So she kind of did it right, Mr. Trade Jeff. Thank you. And here's the more typical portfolio in entertainment. I'm going to fumble with it here. Um, the typical presentation uh, in this horizontal format because it's going to be a cinematic format. Nice sense of composition. So here's some storyboarding, some key frames. One that incorporates a strong background with the characters. And this is where the, the real um, basic hard work of uh, the blue line design of these scenes, laying out using, using perspective, designing it from an aerial perspective so, uh, so the uh, space can be built and designed, but then key art frames to really set up the scenes and showing how the characters are working in space. This is a digital landscape class. These are digital, um, but produced uh, live. And you could see the variety of work. It's a little bit more realistic and um, atmospheric. This is a VizCom class, visual communication. Really learning how to draw uh, mechanical objects and figure drawing. And finding the strong volumes, showing um, overlapping limbs, uh, gesture. So this is a good portfolio that shows a variety of uh, applications. So you can see this person working in a variety of areas within film. Nice moody uh, pieces. And I'll look, I'll show one more. Pinaco. So again, this is a whole presentation with a whole world that's been created. From full scenes to uh, schematics um, laying out the spaces. So these are really key art pieces that show um, kind of the primary scenes in it that show off a lot of different aspects, right, from the backgrounds to the characters. And here's some, these are, these are exercises to be able to, t to design and to um, move characters and change them around, show them in different poses. Some background art. So there's a lot of uh, research that takes place. Um, this is about the Moulin Rouge. This application I could see for um, live action as well as animation. Working in black and white is a good way to, to develop the uh, values so you get 
uh, strong compositions in light and dark before you introduce color. And a portfolio for an entertainment person is going to do this. It's going to show a variety of um, processes so that they can show their aptitude in, in being able to um, function in all those different areas. A lot of work. And again, here's some of the ways of breaking down uh, a landscape in basic shapes um, to get the values and the color design down. And some more examples. And again, we, when we look at these, we have to judge them by the uh, term level and, and then look at the, um, at the quality of the work. And when they, when they do this, so it happens every term, and let's see, this is a six term portfolio. So she has at least two more terms to go. Um, so um, I think it's, it's uh, this is a great portfolio uh, for, its, uh, for its term level. Some of this work may end up in a, in a uh, graduating portfolio, but there'll be certainly a lot more work that's made uh, after the fact. So I think maybe you want to talk about the grad yeah, show. Yeah, we'll talk, uh, take a couple questions. We'll wrap, wrap on up. So as I was mentioning, Aaron, you know, you're talking about the different tracks here, and I just wanted to remind anyone who's tuning in who has interest in looking into illustration at Art Center. Uh, I think sometimes students they hear about the different tracks because there's all there's very a lot of options as the illustration industry is broad as you've outlined it. Um, I don't want anyone who's interested to worry about well I need to prepare a portfolio that's specific to one of those tracks, right? Right. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what are some of the highlights you're looking for in a portfolio for someone who's interested in applying to illustration. Yeah, because illustration is so broad, I think the primary thing to think about illustration is it's really drawing based. So I think it, um, good dr drawing skills, drawing from observation drawing. first, sketchbooks, just draw, uh, you know, I keep responding to drawings of just interiors, um, you know, going to a coffee shop and drawing uh, the tables and the people sitting there, drawing your room, drawing your friends, uh, but then also some life drawing would be great, drawing from the model, a nude model um, uh, preferably, it's a very complicated thing to draw and also shows, it's, you can learn to draw most things through drawing the figure. Um, and then I think it's about storytelling, um, building pictures, maybe some sequential pieces, maybe a few pieces of application. Um, not to, 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 you know, to be too specific, but you, know, you could do a poster for a cause, you could do a, some sequential art, um, telling a short story, um, looking at an editorial um, uh, a magazine article and making a, a new image um, as an illustration, ju just showing a variety of applications. Um, none of this is going to make you, it's going to show us that you want to tell stories with pictures. Um, and then you could decide later on what, what that would be. I mean, we, we have a class in the first term that introduces all the different tracks, and you'd really be working in foundational classes in the first few terms, and then you decide. Um, on that later on. And some people do kind of a hybrid um, as a career. Um, so those things are down the line, but basically telling stories with pictures, drawing the figure, observational drawing, and with a little bit of color occasionally. Yeah, because we don't, we don't expect you to have it figured out, right? We still want to, that's why you're coming here to Art Center. We want to still teach you something. And so you have an opportunity to, you know, experience all those different tracks that Aaron mentioned. But I would, I would uh, emphasize what he, had, what he just mentioned about the figure drawing. Um, and we understand that not all students have access to right. figure drawing as well. So whatever workaround you can do from that, right? You know, even if it's just going to a local coffee shop and, <laughs> and drawing individuals, observational drawing. Right. And I think drawing from life. Yep. So drawing in the mirror, drawing um, still life objects, um, natural, um, um, you know, drawing mountains and, and trees and, and your, your go, go, to the, go to the zoo, right? Go to the zoo yeah. is a great place. Um, they don't have a lot of space to go and you can sit there and, and find them. And, but having to adapt to draw what you see in front of you. Um, you know, sometimes there's a lot of rendering um, in the portfolios and I think one or two pieces of rendering is fine where you're you know, working and, and very carefully um, showing detail. But I'd re also, we'd also rather see um, that you kind of show different stages 
quick, quick sketches, um, improvisational sketches, a little bit of design. If you live in your sketchbook and you, you develop that, uh, showing some key uh, pages, um, even if they're messy, but they're showing us how you think. Those are probably the best part of an illustration portfolio for someone who's applying to our program here. And usually what I would say that Aaron and his colleagues react to are the sketchbooks. They're usually the more personal pieces of your portfolio. You don't really want to show them to anybody because it's things that you do that's not instructed. But that's, that's actually the stuff that the illustration department loves to see. What are you doing when no one's instructing you outside of the classroom? So those more personal, private, uh, 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 a list of drawings that exist in your sketchbook are oftentimes what the department reacts to and could be the deciding factor that says, well, you know what, this is someone that we want here in our program. What differentiates you from other illustrators out there, right? Right. No, I think sometimes there's a strong emphasis on, too, too much emphasis on, on everything being finished and everything being sort of academic. And I'd rather see how you think. I, I think we'd rather um, really understand uh, you as an individual, even if it's funky, if, if it's a little weird, a little weird. sometimes that's even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. I also want to just mention anyone tuning in, some other opportunities for you to actually physically come to campus and check out some of this work in person. Um, we will have our, our graduating show, our grad show. We have it every term, fall, spring, and summer. So the spring graduation show for all of our departments will be uh, April 26, a special admissions opportunity for you to view uh, the graduating work from illustration as well as our other uh, 11 undergraduate programs here. And that'll be at the Pasadena Convention Center. So if there's interest, you could always go onto our website, uh, artcenter.edu, go to the admissions page. There's an admissions events page. And if you're hopefully receiving communications from us, you'll also get a personal invite to that. So come to the Convention Center um, next month in April and check out a, a very large space of uh, graduating student work from not just illustration, but from other, other departments as well. Yeah, I think that's one of the best times because everybody's putting up their best work. Um, it's a really solid display. Um, it really feels like a museum space, um, but you can see uh, across the spectrum everything that's being done and, ha and how, and what we share with other departments and how we're different. Well, that's all for me. I want to thank Aaron Smith, our Associate Chair of Illustration, for being with us today. And thank you all for tuning in. If you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to us. Email is best, admissions at